Sai Ram, imagine that you have been invited to attend a gathering of professionals and you have a chance to interact with each and every one of them. You get to meet doctors, politicians, scientists, sports people, actors, all the professions. It is possible that based on our own life experiences, we will consider some professionals with greater awe and respect compared to some others. It is possible that when we come across a tailor, we may not give so much importance because a tailoring job is possibly not such a highly skilled job or such a highly intellectual job. So also, we come across say a driver. Yes, we have love and regard and respect, but there is no awe when we meet a driver, right? But now imagine if that driver happened to be Mr. Padmanabhan, who drove Swami's car for nearly two decades. Ah, <laughs> now our attitude changes, right? We will immediately go from, ah, okay, a driver to Sairam, Sairam, <laughs> you know? What is the difference? Why is this difference in our expression? It all comes because Padmanabhan, Mr. Padmanabhan is not an ordinary driver. He is God's driver. And that is the magic of being God's professional. That is what should inspire us to be God's accountant, God's engineer, God's doctor. Can I do my profession as an offering to Swami? Being Swami's gardener, Swami's tailor. Imagine Swami's washerman who washed Swami's robes back in those days. You know, on one occasion, Swami refused to buy automatic washing machines because he said, this person will lose his opportunity to wash my robes. Even being Swami's washerman is a great privilege and honor and we would love to interact with that person and we'll be in awe of that person. Swami is a Sanatana Sarathi, he is the eternal charioteer. And Mr. Padmanabhan got the opportunity to be his charioteer, his Sarathi, his chauffeur. How that happened is a beautiful story and let us drink in the nectarous bliss of that story. From a worldly point of view, Mr. Padmanabhan was not very highly educated. He just had a diploma in automobile engineering. But he was learned enough to know that he has to work with all sincerity, dedication and determination. And those precise qualities were what led him to be in charge of more than 300 vehicles in the Indian Air Force Base situated in the northeastern state of India, Assam. Very soon, life rewarded him with a contract to maintain cars in Baghdad, Iraq. And that's where he took up the contract. And for the two years from 1981 to 1983, that is where he was. There too, he did his job to perfection, working very hard, sincerely, and ensuring that all his clients and customers were very happy with him. Because of that, he got a higher contract from 1983 to 1986 in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, and there, he began to maintain luxury cars. He would drive and also be the mechanic for these very cars. It's very funny, but in this Islamic nation, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, that is where Mr. Padmanabhan got to know about Swami. Can you believe that? You know, when Swami decides to enter your life, it doesn't matter where you are, how you are, what you're doing. Wherever you may be, in the remotest corner of the world, he will come to you. Just imagine Mr. Padmanabhan is from Kerala and all his life there he had not heard of Satisai Baba. And now he has a friend, Mr. Venu Gopal, who is also from Kerala and he was a devotee of Swami. He began to tell Padmanabhan on a daily basis different stories of Swami and slowly an interest in Swami developed in Padmanabhan. 
all of this in Riyadh, in Saudi Arabia. In 1987, for some strange reason, both Venu Gopal's and Padmanabhan's contracts were not renewed and so they returned back to Kerala. And having grown in this friendship, now this is true friendship, Swami says, a true friend is one who takes you closer to God. And therefore, definitely Venu Gopal will qualify to be a true friend to Padmanabhan. And they both together, along with two other brothers of Venu Gopal, started a printing and publishing business in Kerala. This was in the city of Ernakulam. In the meanwhile, Padmanabhan got such a desire to have Darshan of Swami and in 1987, he made his first visit to Puttaparthi Prashantinilyam as a member of the Sevadal team from Kerala. Back in that year, there were just about 35 to 40 people who had travelled to Puttaparthi to be volunteers in Swami's ashram. And even as he neared Puttaparthi, he felt that something is happening. He felt a tingling throughout his body. He knew that some amazing thing is going to happen in his life. Indeed, all his karma yoga so far, yoga karma su kaushalam, Krishna says, where yoga is perfection in action. And that is what Padmanavar had done all these years. That was going to be rewarded with the next Bhakti Yoga and Padmanabhan was not aware of it, but he could feel it already. Sure enough, after a week of service where Padmanabhan did various different activities in and around the ashram, Swami actually granted Padnamaskar to all these volunteers. And as an icing on the cake at the end of it, he also granted a group photograph. Thrilled and touched with this experience with Swami, Padmanabhan went and purchased the Satisai Speaks Volume 1 as a takeaway gift when he returned to Kerala. Back in Kerala, he began to read this book voraciously. I mean, he says that this book was unputdownable. Every day he would keep reading the same pages over and over again. He read the book through and through multiple times. And he said that this was the most transformative experience in his life. The book contained solutions to all his problems. <laughs> Part 1 of Satisai speaks. It contained inspiration, it contained motivation, enthusiasm, it contained insights on how to go about leading his life. Everything. I needn't read any other book or listen to any other thing because this book is with me. That is what he said. Such was his thirst that he soon went and borrowed Part 2 of Satisai Speaks and began to read that as well. He consumed the Satisai Speaks and Satisai Speaks consumed him. And in that process, the tiny spark of love for Swami that was in his heart began to grow and grow. Though the business, publishing and printing business failed, it didn't bother him. Again, the four of them came together and started a transport company called Prashanti Transport Company. Basically, it was just a truck which would transport goods as courier service. And Mr. Padmanabhan maintained the truck and, you know, would drive it around. As his living went on in that manner, his life was centered around Swami. And every year he made sure that he would travel to volunteer his services and have Swami's darshan. This went on for about three, four years. In the June of 1991, Mr. Padmanabhan got an offer from one of the departments of the Kerala government where he had to maintain and drive a truck transporting coconut to different parts of the state and to other states. And the pay was as good as what he was getting in the business and he didn't have to take any risk that he was taking in his business. So he thought this was a good opportunity to join there and shut down this Prashanti transport service. He decided that the next month when he would go to Puttaparthi for Seva, he would seek Swami's blessings to shut down his company and take up this job. But that year, when he went to Prashantinilyam, he found out that there was an announcement being made that Swami wanted to recruit drivers. Why? Because Swami was starting something called Prashanti Travels. And all those who are interested may apply. Basically, whenever Swami moved from Parthi to Bangalore or to any other place, there were people outside the ashram 
who would mint a lot of money in transporting devotees from one place to the other. When Swami got to know that exorbitant rates were being charged, he decided that he would have a car service of his own at one fourth or one third the cost of what people were charging outside. Dear brothers and sisters, there are two kinds of people. One kind use all the resources that they have to attain Swami. The other kind uses Swami to attain all these resources, money, power, relationships in the world. May we always pray to Swami that we should always be the former, where we use all our resources, our strength, our energy, our money, our relationships to achieve Swami and not the other way around. Needless to say, Padmanabhan got excited and he applied for it. At the end of that seva, when Swami gave Padnamaskar and blessed all the volunteers, he indicated to Padmanabhan to go in for an interview. And in that interview was also two other people who had applied to be drivers for Swami. As it always happens in the interview room, there was a general interview where Swami spoke to all the people who had gathered, after which Swami took the devotees one by one into the inner chamber for a personal interview. And during this personal interview, Swami made two revelations to Padmanabhan, which made his jaw drop in awe. You know what Swami told him? I also don't know because he didn't reveal. He said it is so personal and intimate that he can't share it with me even now, decades and decades after that experience. So you can imagine if that is something so close and secretive in his heart and Swami is revealing that to him, what would have been his state of mind? When this happened, he felt that this is someone very special and I want to be with him and serve him. And Swami told him, you don't worry, today is Tuesday, you can join from Thursday. And thus it was that on the 11th of July 1991, Padmanabhan became one of the drivers at Prashanti Travels. As he embarked on the Bhakti Yoga, he was given the chance to serve Swami's bhaktas, his devotees. His job consisted of transporting devotees up and down to Parthi, from Parthi to Bangalore, to different places that Swami would visit. And it became so intense that on many occasions he would miss darshan and bhajans because he would be serving the devotees. And he used to often wonder, Swami, I came here so that I can see you more and have your darshan and be with you, but I'm not getting the chance to be with you. But dear brothers and sisters, that is what it is. Serve the bhaktas and the Lord is served. Serve Manava and Madhava get served. Service to man is service to God. Jana Seva is Janardana Seva. Swami says, yes. Serve, love all and serve all. And that reaches Swami. And that is what Padmanabhan was made to realize. Though he didn't understand it at that point in time, he kept yearning and pining and craving for a chance to see Swami, to touch Swami, to speak to Swami. Because all the time was being spent with devotees in transporting them. 